this meeting of the Metro uh, Parks Board of Directors to order. I would also like to recognize the presence of previous uh, a former Parks Board member Joanne Brannon. Well, thank you for being here. We'll move now to the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.6030, 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. We we'll move now to the consideration of the minutes. Have you all had an opportunity to read the minutes? And if so, I'll accept a motion for approval. So moved. Is there a second? second? It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion regarding the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing none, the motion uh, passes. Are there any, Director Odom, are there any Metro Council referrals? There are none today. Thank you so much. We'll move now to, we don't have any old business. We'll move now to the consent agenda. Uh, Director Odom, I understand there is an addition. Yes, ma'am, we have a late item to um, add to the consent agenda, Nashville Soccer Club, Juneteenth Community Watch Party at Elizabeth Park, June 18th, 2021. This is an amplification request. Okay, hearing that addition, are there any questions? If not, I will um, uh, accept a motion to accept the consent agenda in its entirety. I so moved. Second. Thank you so much. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Moving now to new business, 06-21-03, Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms request board approval of an amendment to our previously approved grant request as it relates to the repair of the mission shelter by Lake Severe. No changes are proposed to the funding structure. All costs will be borne by Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms. The total cost of $35,000 mentioned in the previous grant request for repairs to the mission shelter is an estimate. Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms will cover any additional costs over this amount. The shelter was damaged when a tree fell on it in January of 2020. Friends of Shelby proposed to hire the Metro Parks carpenters to complete the framing and painting work and use professional contractors for the roofing. Each month, Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms will receive an invoice from Metro Parks for the carpenter, carpenter payroll amounts associated with the parks repairs to the mission shelter. Parks will then invoice Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms for the payroll amounts to be reimbursed. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. Is there a motion for approval? Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. 06-21-04. Metro Parks is requesting approval of an agreement for grant of easement for conservation greenway between Germantown JV LLC and Metro Government on property of owned by Germantown JV LLC located at 1420 Adams Street. Parcel number 08205017770. Director Odom, are there any comments regarding this recommendation? No ma'am, no comments. All righty, I'll accept a motion for approval. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Excuse me, Madam Chair, this is to be deferred to the Acquisition Committee. Thank you so much. It sure should. <laughs> Please excuse me. Thank you. Please excuse us. 06-21-05 Metro Parks is requesting approval in concept of a, of, participation, of a participation agreement between Metro and CRP slash Alta LLCA, the developers of 200 Cumberland Bend, a multifamily development adjacent to the Cumberland River Greenway Trailhead located at 102 Great Circle Road. The participation agreement will include design and construction of the improvement subject to parks 
Metro Parks design approval and maintenance by the owners of the 200 Cumberland Bend property. Director Odom, are there any comments regarding this recommendation? No, ma'am, that is a deferral to the acquisition committee as well. Thank you so much. We're deferring to acquisition. 06-21-06, Michelle Crane, president of Creative Parks Nashville, requests the Parks Board approval of an in-kind donation for improvements to the Centennial Arts Center shed roof project with an esti estimated value of $4,000. Improvements include electrical installation and addition of an industrial ceiling fan. In the case that improvements total more than $4,000, Creative Parks Nashville will be responsible for paying those amounts. No money will be no donated to Metro Parks. Improvements will be paid for directly by Creative Parks Nashville with no, Nash with no cash match or any other obligation to Metro Parks, to Metro or Parks. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. I'll accept the motion for approval. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. The motion passes. 06-21-07, board to approve open range salary increase and cost of living salary increase consistent with Metro employees for the Director of Parks as per the 2021-22 Metropolitan Government Pay Plan. Director Odom. Are there any comments regarding this recommendation? So awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no comments, Madam Chair. I would just say that the, um, remind you all that the um, pay plan for next fiscal year has not yet passed. This is just uh, in the event um, it, it does so that we are prepared should you be so obliged. Thank you so much. Is there a motion for approval? I move approval. Second. Thank you so much. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 06-21-08, staff requests to establish a permanent record for Metro Parks drawings and plans for Shelby Golf Course created by, the Donald, by Donald Ross in the early 20th century, a world famous golf course designer. The plans were recently re relocated back to the Parks Department for Metro Planning where they have been stored for many years. Staff wants to establish record of this history in the event that Shelby Park is ever remodeled or upgraded and may be done according to the original drawings. Director Odom, are there any comments regarding this recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Before I yield the floor to Mr. Holmes to um, uh, answer your questions and give a description, um, just so that the record reflects this request more accurately, mm -hmm. I'd like to read um, read how it should, should be stated. Staff requests that the Park Board acknowledge and create a permanent record that the Donald Ross drawings of Shelby Shelby Golf Course, created in the 1920s and currently on display at the Tennessee Golf Foundation headquarters in Franklin, belong to Metro Parks and are simply on loan. In the event that Shelby Golf Course were to be upgraded or remodeled or a more suitable location in parks was created to display the drawings, we wish to establish ownership of the drawings. Um, and that reflects the request again more accurately. Thank you so much. Hearing the um, update, um, is there, are there any questions? Make a motion, we approve. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion passes. 06-21-09, board to, affor to affirm the reappointment of Dr. Michelle Steele as board chair for Metro Parks and Recreation, term to expire March 30th, 2026. The Metro Council voted on this matter in March of 2021. Are there any comments? Seeing none, thank you all so much. 06-21-10, requesting approval for permitted sale of alcohol for Predators events at Walk of Fame Park for the remainder of the 2020-2021 NHL season. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? I we would request up. that we withdraw that item now that the season is over. I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of history behind that. As you all know, um, permitting of, for the sale of alcohol in parks, um, that authority lies with the parks board and not the parks director. And uh, given the celebratory nature of uh, the NHL season, uh, we uh, will get requests to have watch parties at different parks, particularly Walk, Walk of Fame Park. Um, and I did not have that authority to um, approve that. 
um, it will probably come up again next season, but we'll address that when it comes. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. That's it. So it's withdrawn. Thank you so much. We'll move now to capital projects update with Tim Nage. Thank you, Dr. Steele. Your report is in your packet, and I'll just hit some of the highlights. Centennial Park Phase 2 will be substantially complete this week, and then we will take down fences as grass gets established. So that is something that we will just monitor and, and remove fencing, relocate fencing um, and as we can uh, to reopen the park and, and be complete with that project. At uh, Fort Negley, uh, we have been negotiating a price from the um, planning team uh, for a uh, contract amount. That pricing is in. It's within budget. And so that's with uh, Metro Procurement to proceed with the execution of a contract. At Mill Ridge Park, uh, the general contractor has been on site installing silt fence uh, and other erosion control measures. We have a grading permit, and um, so that work will begin very soon. And Jackie may have some information about a potential event on June 12th, um, an, an opening. Um, at Ravenwood Park, uh, we have the same general contractor, same contract as Mill Ridge. Ravenwood is a, is a few weeks behind uh, Mill Ridge in terms of getting erosion control in. And then at Wharf Park, we're uh, proceeding with master planning. We've been having meetings with various um, stakeholder groups to get input in advance of a round of public engagement later this summer. Those are the highlights, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Director. We have a lot of events to talk about. As you know, now that the city is opening up, uh, you're going to see more and more events in the park. So I'm going to run through this very quickly. If you have any questions, you can contact us a little bit later. You can also look on our website as well. Um, Red Caboose Concert Series is the first event in that, or the first concert in that series is scheduled for June 4th. And those concert uh, events go June 4th, June 11th, June 18th, and June 25th. The Big Band Dances, which is one of our uh, most popular events, has moved from the band shelter. It's now at Cumberland Park uh, from 7 to 9.30. It's a free event, of course. Uh, the first event in that series is July 9th. Roy Parton and his all-star band are the featured guests. Movies in the Park is scheduled every Thursday in June, beginning June 3rd in Elmington Park. Cornelia Fort Pickin' Party, June 12th, July 17th, and August 28th at Cornelia Fort Air Park in Shelby Park. We have three Juneteenth festivals scheduled in our parks this year. All are, are uh, of course, on June 19th. One is at 10 a.m. at Hadley Park. The other is at 9, uh, starts at 530 and runs through 930 at Fort Negley. And uh, we also have one at schedule at Parkwood Park. Uh, Jazz on the Cumberland, another popular event, is scheduled from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Cumberland Park. And that gets underway, I believe, on uh, the first one is scheduled for June 11th. The Nashville Pride schedule of the Nashville Pride Festival, excuse me, is slated from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. at Public Square Park. And finally, Church Street Park reopens on June 3rd. They will have live music start at 12.30 p.m. and a children's uh, craft event uh, will start at 1 p.m. And Tim mentioned the groundbreaking ceremony at Mill Ridge Park. I do have that scheduled for June 12th, but I don't have any additional details at the moment. Are there any questions? Thank you so much. We'll move now to the report of the director, Director Odom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you all um, may recall, we presented our uh, FY22 operating budget to the Metro Council on May 20th. That presentation did go well. That hearing went well. Um, we are, as a department, 
receiving a lot of positive attention and acknowledge, uh, acknowledgments from city leaders, which is great, um, particularly for the role that we have played during the COVID epidemic. Um, thank you to Team Parks uh, and to the Parks Board for your advocacy and support. Uh, special thanks to Susanna Scott Barnes and Jeff Haynes who attended that hearing with us. Um, thank you to all of the uh, park users and park supporters, including friends groups who uh, support the department and the park system. Um, the budget should be passed uh, by the end of June, so we will hear that. And I'll just follow up and say I've had lots of um, follow-up contact with council members asking questions um, to augment our budget beyond our request. So fingers crossed. Uh, it looks positive for us. Um, a reminder that the formal public input period for the, requ the request to rename Hadley Park will close at 4.30 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday, June 8th, after which uh, the staff will compile the results and submit them to the Parks Board. Um, in administration, our HR section, with input from the senior staff, has developed a code of conduct and ethics for the department. We've gotten approval from Central HR and will begin to talk through the document um, and become more familiar with it in its final form very soon. It is basically a set of expectations of how we interact with one another um, and as we represent the Parks Department. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Consolidated Maintenance Division remains very busy. Uh, preparing uh, facilities for seasonal activities, attending to deferred maintenance items, uh, routine work, and then still working on um, repairs from the late March uh, flood. Our summer enrichment program started today at all 25 community centers. All outdoor pools and spray parks will open on June 11th. Uh, we have a new partnership with the Conservancy for Centennial Park. We are collaborating with their Equitable Engagement Committee to help steer um, the Centennial Arts Center's 50th anniversary celebration for next year. Uh, we are piloting a clay class for seniors at Hadley. Um, some of you may have already spoken with John Holmes, but uh, Wave Country opened this past weekend and requests for larger events are incre increasing as, as the city opens. Um, so as you all know, the, the park system is as busy as it has ever been. People are excited about the warmer weather and getting back to semi-normal. So we are working through all of that. Um, I did want to let you all know that I have spoken with Stan Fossick um, he is doing well, and I wanted to uh, coordinate with him when he could be here in person as he uh, requested to, for us to honor him uh, for service to the Parks Board. He's doing a lot of traveling and enjoying yes. Yes. an unobligated schedule. I understand that with the, uh, what was it? He was on the, um, yeah, the grand jury committee, and I think his wife has some time freed up, so they are moving about as they so choose. So he will get back to me when he is available. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. I love it. We had a great conversation. I'm, I'm just glad to know that he's doing well, but yeah. he will be here before you at some point for us to adequately honor him. With that, that's my report. And if you have questions, I'll take them. Any questions? I do. Yes, ma'am. Um, pools, indoor pools also opening? Pools are open. Yeah. Okay, you said outdoor. I just wanted I'm to sorry, be sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. Indoor Thank pools you. are open. Yeah, I thought you knew something that I didn't know. I just like. need that's, that, that was personal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> need yeah, to okay. know. Need to know. Thank you. Uh, moving now to announcements, requests for future agenda items and open items. Are there any? I'd like to make a request for a future agenda item um, in order to carry out the recommendations of Mayor Cooper's Public Integrity Task Force, the Department of Law has been asked to provide ethics training to all boards and commissions. We had planned to have that on a, a board agenda before now, but it'll take about 30 minutes. I'd like to make some time on the July agenda for that. Okay. Is that different than the training that we've taken online? It is. Oh, yes. okay. Good question. Any additional announcements, requests for future agenda items or open items? 
All righty, we'll move now to public input uh, regarding 03-21-02. Ms. Sharon W. Hurt, President of Metropolitan Minority Caucus, requests the board to rename Hadley Park to Hadley Lillard Park. If there are citizens that would like to speak into this issue, please step to the microphone, state your name, your address, and please tell us if you've spoken public publicly on the record at a parks board meeting or community meeting previously. You will have a maximum of three minutes to speak. And if I need to repeat that, your name, your address, and if you've spoken publicly before, before the board or at one of our community meetings, please. Yes. And that's fine. That's fine. I did come before you when we were getting an approval for the finishing one and shelter time. Just this one. And please state your name and address. Alma Sanford, 6317 Paddington Way, Antioch. I come here today as a descendant of the founders of Nashville. And one who wants to protect his heritage. In 1783, my fifth great grandfather, Ephraim McLean, came to Nashville as a surveyor. He brought with him my fifth great grandmother, Elizabeth Davidson McLean. Together, they were able to persuade the local governing body to name this county Davidson after Elizabeth Davidson McLean's first cousin, General William Lee Davidson, who died fighting the British. Now, what's this got to do with Hadley Park? I know you're thinking that. I've talked with my African-American friends who remember playing in Hadley Park, and I myself have enjoyed playing in Hadley Park. They played in it when it was the only park available to them in the city of Nashville. I know we didn't have metro government when it was founded in 1912. There were parks in the county, but the people in the city could not play there. Lord knows we've seen enough obliteration of African-American historical artifacts during the lifetime of many of us when I-40 split Jefferson Street. As the founder of the Tennessee Woman Suffragist Monument that stands in Centennial Park, I've proved my interest in preserving history. We included Frankie Pierce on that monument because we recognize the great contributions made by African Americans. The new Frankie Pierce Park is a step forward. Let's not take a step backward. As a member of the Tennessee Historical Society, I urge this board to reject any request to rename Hadley Park. Coincidentally, tonight at five o'clock, the Historical Society of which I'm a member, will hold its annual meeting. As a member of the Tennessee Historical Society, I will urge our board to reject any request to rename Hadley Park. I will definitely mention this at our meeting tonight. Please maintain the name of Hadley Park as a reminder of the positive influence of Dr. W.A. Hadley, an African-American physician with whom Major E.C. Lewis, who named the park, had worked during the 1897 Centennial Exposition. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Joyce Perkins, and I live at 723 Long Hunter Court, 37217, and I am for the change. Have you have you spoken to this into this issue? Before? No, I just introduced myself last time. That's I, I completely didn't really... fine. I just yes, you, you did speak at the last meeting, correct? Right. Yeah. We will give me just a second. Uh, I'll need to ask the board to vote to suspend the Roberts Rules of Order as it relates to this issue uh, before additional comments um, from persons who have spoken into the issue can speak again. And so I will have them accept them. Hey, uh, yes. I know that I. Can Okay. So she can. So we don't need to suspend at this point. Thank you. Thank you. And like, um, 
And this time I do have a couple of things I want to say, and I did write them down because otherwise it racial events that this country has seen. And I say that because it is basically unknown. I know over the years that I have been down here, I've been here since 1979, I have had calls like how long have I known about not only Tulsa, but like how long have I known about uh, Juneteenth and stuff. Up north from New York where I'm from, I'm a transplant, but like um, we didn't learn this. And I just feel that with Knowing Kwame, I was his first wife. I have raised two children. Uh, they are now, um, my goodness, they're uh, 56 and 55. Three grandchildren, they're all African-American children. So I say that just to give you a context of who I am too. But I just feel that uh, with 100 years going by with things pushed under the carpet, that uh, this would be a good chance to do things in a different kind of a way here in Tennessee. I know Sharon Hurt has made, um, I guess it was a motion, I wasn't at the first couple of meetings where it's now looking at being Hadley Lillard Park rather than just Hadley. I'm suggesting, and I think it was said a little bit last time too, to kind of build on it. Maybe to have three plaques with three different stories right next to each other so that the truth uh, is being told in terms of truth and justice and peace and accountability, something that we don't have. And I just want to make mention that in terms of what's going on in, on in Tennessee and in Nashville as well too, of course, but like just to really build on it and do something different than what's being done in the state. For instance, the new law, I brought a book that I, I, I wish I could give everybody a copy of if you haven't read it, but it's called I'll Take You There, Exploring National Social Justice Sites. And it's done by Dr. Williams over at TSU, and Dr. Th uh, and I don't know whether she's a doctor, but uh, um, Thurber, she's out of Portland. Now, this book took eight years to write. There's a story behind it, and I suggest maybe that you take a look at it for a lot of reasons. But like one is uh, the inclusiveness. I've known Kwame since I was 20, and I'm not 20 anymore. And um, I think in his heart, he would say, what are you all doing this for? But on the other hand, the fact that we're building on it and moving forward, I think there would be a piece of him that he would really want this to happen. Was that my bill? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for, uh, okay. for uh, coming to speak this afternoon. afternoon. Anyone else want to speak into the issue? Arnett Bodenhammer, 2900 Shawboy Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm opposed to any change in the name of Hadley Park. Hadley Park is 109 years old. Those that had benefited are those who were in my age who started with Hadley Park at a very early age. For a young black person in this city, there was no other place to go except to Hadley Park. Hadley Park doesn't need any history, nor does it need any Hattie name to change the history or to add to it. It won't add anything economically to Hadley Park. There's not many young folks that could benefit that I've seen at any of these settings that would benefit what I did and my memories of Hadley Park. I was on the board for the 100 years of park. I sit up there and listen to the vice mayor, who was Howard Gentry, talk about his grow up in Hadley Park. So I'm not the only person who has grown up in Hadley Park. You have to be my age to really, or somewhat younger, to appreciate the benefits that I had in Hadley Park. Uh, I see no reason to add any names or to change 
to Hadley Park. Well, you know, after you get 109 years old, what does anybody want to do for you? You just want to be still living. So we still look forward to Hadley Park as it once was, as we once remembered it. I don't think any of you can understand the benefits that Hattie Park had to me. And I oppose Hattie, the name change of any name to Hattie Park. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Joanne Brannon. I live at 5444 San Marcos Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37220. I have spoken previously on this subject. I oppose the name change of Hadley Park, and I began by applauding the Park Board for honoring the integrity of the public hearing process, which allows differing opinions to be expressed and heard on pertinent issues. The establishment of the Hadley Park in 1912 obviously meant that it was deemed important for African Americans to lead active and healthy lives for a better quality of life like all other citizens. The property was a perfect site. Through the years, people who live all over the world have experienced some form of activity at this historic park. Many who have attended HBCUs across the nation react positively when they hear the name of Hadley. I previously referenced the Hadley Park Tennis Club that was founded in 1953 by Dr. Cazort, Dr. Crump, and Mr. Watkins. I also mentioned the recognition of the Hadley Park Junior Developments Program recognized by the USTA with a $65,000 grant. Had the Hadley name been a, a form of contention, I doubt that the African Street Fair would have moved from TSU to Hadley Park. I believe it was because of its historic, uh, because it was a historic site, because it was a highly recognized hub of activity for the city and surrounding areas, and that it would lead to additional success of the fair, which I attend annually. Furthermore, I'm interested in knowing if there's been any consideration or inquiry as to how this might impact the Hadley Towers of MDHA and the Hadley Public Library. While I do not oppose an honor being given to the activists, I strongly recommend that the Hadley name stand alone. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. I am Esther Cottle. Uh, my address is 2061 Traymore Village, Nashville. Um, I can't remember what else I was supposed to give. I have not spoken to this body before, but I did attend a meeting, and I was very impressed with the work that you all do. You have a big responsibility. And I think in that responsibility, um, you want to do a job that is fair to all. I do oppose the name change. Mr. Lilliard deserves, he deserves proper recognition of his contribution to Nashville. And to just merely attach his name to a historical park that is already established is not giving a rightful due to him. Nashville owes him. We owe him, Mr. Lilliard, his individual recognition for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Elisha Bumarozic. My address is 3879 Lund Drive, Nashville, 37218. I spoke at a community meeting over at Hallett Park 
uh, the last time. And I am for the change. And I've had a business on Jefferson Street for a decade now. This was our 10 year anniversary. And I've worked and lived and been in Hadley Park. And my first way of getting into the community was being a part of the African Street Festival at Hadley Park, which Kwame was so um, prominent in making happen. Changing the name of the park will be able to kind of rectify the situation because when I first heard that there was a black Dr. Hadley, I found it out at that community meeting. I had been to Hadley Park so many times and never heard about uh, this gentleman and his contributions. And this is, I think, a great way to both honor the actual black Dr. Hadley as well as Kwame and change what's there already because right now there's only a plaque about the plantation owner Hadley. So changing and amending the name will help kind of bridge that gap between the uh, older and the newer generational gap that we have that's I think the disconnect with the whole name change part. Uh, the history doesn't change but it can be clarified. And I can't imagine what my elders went through with the struggles they endured and how important that Hadley Park is. But I think attaching Kwame's name to it will bring more to it. I mean, he brought life back to the North Nashville area, to the Jefferson Street Corridor with the African Street Fest. I mean, people came from everywhere to go there. And when you go there and you go to the festival, it really will just be able with a name change to just clarify that this is who this park is named for, this is what it's about, these are the people who helped, you know, make this area great. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Henry Caudill. I live at uh, 2061 Traymore Village Drive, Nashville. I did speak at the um, community meeting at Hadley. And at that meeting, I opposed the name change, and I do again today. But after that meeting, <coughs> I had a chance to learn more about Mr. Lillard. And since doing that, I do believe that he's worthy of our um, thanks appreciation and honoring. But I also think that our community is large enough, diverse enough for us to find a more suitable way to do that. Uh, I don't think anyone has said that one spot has to have two icons. Uh, we certainly have enough parks, streets, whatever, to do that. So why take away from Hadley Park, which has its history, and honor Mr. Lillard in a way that would, in my opinion, diminish both? We certainly have many opportunities to um, uplift his, his um, contributions to our society. So I oppose the name change. But I do strongly recommend that we take more time, if that's what is needed, to do a better job in figuring out a way to really uplift Mr. Lillard's contributions to our community. Thank you. Are there any other persons who want to speak into the issue? Well, thank you so much. We will now close the public uh, meeting regarding um, this issue 03-21-02. All righty, well, having no other business before us, well, I will accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? second. <laughs> meeting adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, 
visit nashville.gov.